here we are, part 29 of my building the Black Pearl. This is the all scenario version. I've built two other Black Pearls. This will be my final Black Pearl. And uh, as you can see, I've made a lot of progress. I want to mention that on some of the rat line rope work, I decided to use a lot heavier and uh, that uh, tar twine that I had mentioned, or I either mentioned it in the last video or it'll be in this video. This tarred twine I used because it's heavier and thicker. In looking at some of the ships that are actually real ships, there's some pretty massive rope work. So I decided to use the heavier and you'll see that featured in this video. I want to give a big shout out to Andrew O'Connor, who is the first person that has supported my efforts uh, financially. And I never expected it. I was totally uh, taken aghast, but I appreciate the donation that he made for my efforts. If you'd be interested in doing something like that, and financially I don't really need it per se, but it was a very fine gesture on his part, and it will go towards uh, any of my future builds or any of the things that I purchase, uh, and then sometimes do videos on it. So I, I really appreciate that. If you're interested, if you look at the right of your screen down below the video, you'll see three small dots, and if you click on that, it'll open up another window, and at the top, I think it says uh, a thank you and a little dollar sign. If you tap that, it'll take you to a screen where then you can select like $2 or $5, whatever amount you'd like. And no pressure. I don't expect it. Uh, it was just a, a thrill for me to have someone take it upon themselves to find those three dots and, and support my efforts. And I really appreciate it. So, Andrew, thanks a lot. With that being said, let me show you uh, some of the rope work that I've done and then more importantly, how I created these very scary looking black sails. This is Landscapers fabric that I picked up at Menards. It's the least quality that you can get. It was not expensive at all. This is from the kit and this is the four mast. And this is a white crayon and I'm just going to kind of outline it. So I'd recommend that you go at least an inch larger all the way around because this will really shrink up. So now I'm going to cut this out. This is a 3 16 inch dowel rod that I rubbed with black uh, paint water-based acrylic paint, just kind of used it as a stain because I rubbed it in and then wiped it off. I'm going to attach it using double-faced carpet tape, but I'll cut a real thin strip. I'm going to attach that to the dowel rod. The trick to this is getting it so I discovered if I take a sharp blade, it gets me started. Now I'm going to attach the sail to this dowel rod. Now I've been suspending this in the air and doing the work with the heat gun, but for this I'm going to try it just on this pad so you can see better. And this is just a traditional heat gun, and I do it on the lowest setting, so not the hottest. And you'll see it reacts real quickly. Now I've started very slowly, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this with a couple pieces of this tar, tar twine. Because I want the sails retracted, not open. Here's the next piece, and you can see it's longer than the dowel rod. And what I'm going to do is put the dowel in the center and fold this and cover up the entire thing. And I've decided suspending it works better. So I'm going to relocate and set up my camera differently and do this step with it suspended in the air. Now I'm going to start at the back because I want it to shrivel up first. Remember, there's two layers plus the shrivel up one underneath.
I keep working on techniques on sails and I think this is going to be the best one yet and what I did is I took and traced the outline from the uh, blueprints of the ship for this sail then I folded it and cut it so I have the same thing on both sides I want to take a little bit of CA glue and get this attached just at the top and the reason I only do that is this is going to shrink a lot when I heat it up so you can see I've got about an inch more than what I need there so it's going to shrink so I've got these clamping scissors just so I can kind of form it and hold it in positions and different things so let's see how well I do This is a trial and error process, so I can slide that up. So, I, there's where it was glued. It's just hanging on by a thread, so I can use that if I want, or I could push this up. But I think I'm going to pull it right down like that. Let me release this one. That's my first attempt, and I can pull all this off and start over if I want to. This will give you an idea of, of kind of what it's going to look like. And here's the latest one. Ignore the, the tie job on the back. That's just temporary. But you can see the rotted sail effect that I can obtain. Again, I don't know that I'm going to use that one. I'll take more time and make one more like this one back here. I think that's a better example of what I'm looking for. This is also a good view of the, uh, the sails and how I'm working on them. I'm doing a little bit more trimming off. I don't want them to hang down too far. So this, and this might look a little thick, so I may thin this out a little bit more. And after you do the heat gun, they do become kind of uh, stiff. So they're not going to move around too much. But I'm very happy with how that turned out. Way up here is a pirate flag that I made and it also was worn. I'm working on the rat lines and I have decided at other people's recommendations to take some beeswax and wax the line that I'm going to use. This will be for the climbing rope and I normally go one direction and then the other. I just kind of work it in, you know, push my thumb pretty hard. Don't get yourself a rope burn by any means. Not too long ago, I had a kit to make rat lines and the instructions on how to make the clove hitch knots was amazingly clear and it made it so much easier. I looked online, a lot of people go from left to right this book specifically said go right to left. Now if I had a way to hold this over on this side I could do clove hitches all the way across or if I had a third hand but on this first one I'm just going to do a simple square knot and in reality if you go from the back side and pull this through it'll set it up just right so I'm going over the top and just making a square knot here I'm going to go as low as possible. I'm not perfect on making those dead eyes. Okay, so that gets us set. Watch how easy this is. Also, if you're, if you're interested, it's been my experience that it takes, what, however long this would be, it takes minimally twice as much to do it all the way across. 
So I'm going to go a little bit more than that and we'll see how I turn out. But I also, I also want to make sure I have enough. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my line. You're going to simply go past that line and come back underneath the line. And that gives me this little kind of a S-shaped loop there. Well, because that's, there we go. Now you simply go behind again, reach it, and dive it right through that hole that is created by the two lines. And this gives you the close, clo this gives you that clothe hitch shape. It's like a figure eight or a S. And the beauty of this is I can pull this, you know, I can kind of squish those down and I can pull this pretty tight and it's not going to pull that line over. If I want to have a little sag, because I think this should have a little sag, I can grab and pull, pull, and I'm pulling pretty hard, and it might just give me a little spare, but it does not distort the line. Now I'm going to do two rows and then quit. You're on your own after that. I may do a special session online just of tying rat lines. Again, so I'm going through, I'm going to go in, reach it, take it underneath the line, now I'm going through, pull it back out, and go through that loop. Now I'm going to work those kind of gently down, hopefully you can see. And when I get close I can start, and I'm, I'm pulling that really hard. And then I give that little extra tug because I'd like to have a little bit of imperfection. But if you want them perfectly straight, you can probably get that just by pulling to the left. So again, here we go. I'm going between, coming underneath. I'm going back. This time I'm going to pull it out and go right through that hole. Pull to the left. So that's why I think working right to left, it's the answer. It just works so much easier. For me, anyway. So again, going around the line that I'm tying to, going underneath. Now I'm going back to the same spot, but this time I'm coming over and going through that loop. Is that easy or what? Oops, almost went over. You got to go under. Now you're going over and through the hole. Or the loop or the opening, whatever you want to call it. Now you can slide these up and down a little bit if you'd like. You can see I have some extra left over that was kind of waste. I might be able to use that up the top. And I've also been known to come back and just a little tap of CA glue on those. It's about twice. I'm going to go a little shorter this time so I don't have as much waste. Although this is going to hardly have any left. Now remember I said this first one I go behind and bring it out. You can also go through here because it's easier and pull this out. And then when you make the knot the square knot, you're going to want to pull this string all the way that way because you want your your line to be going that direction. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I can actually feed that through there and when it gets close to the end of the line right here now I'll start pulling it tight. And to be honest with you, I don't measure this, I just do it by feel. So again, under, go back this time over the top through that loop. Gives me my two S shapes or the letter L or the number eight, however you want to refer to it.
cylinder over through the opening. This time I don't have a whole lot left over, so I did that about right. It's my last time through the, the loop. Pull it tight. I can adjust them if I want to up and down. I can re-pull this one a little tighter if I want, pull in both directions. So let me get all that finished. Looking from the inside out, you can see the rat lines that I've finished. There's the lower section. There's an upper section. Come back over to this side. And you can see I don't make them perfect. I figure this is a pirate ship and it's gotten a lot of use. And by uh, guys climbing up and down, it's going to have some uh, wear and tear on those lines. So as you can tell, I'm getting close to being finished. I've got a few more things I want to tidy up, and uh, it won't really be finished when I say it's finished. This is something that from time to time I'll just add something to, or you know, I'll think of something that I'd like to, to change or add, and I'll continue to do that. That'll be it for this episode, and I'll continue working. I have some more things I have in mind that I want to work on. One example is back here at the rear of the ship, I'm going to put some rudder chains, two on each side that'll go to the rudder. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.